We looked at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley yesterday. We look at the Bloomberg data this morning. Everybody seems to be coalescing around that we're putting in a bottom, um, although the outlook might still be quite grim. What evidence are you seeing on the state of play on the global economy this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Um, no, I think that's, uh, it, is, it is really interesting, obviously, what we've been through. Pretty unprecedented and is an is a overused word to describe this, I think. Um, we've, I think we've really been three phases. First of all, we had the, um, we had the, the financial mechanisms that the, um, the governments around the world, the central banks, have, have put in place to fix the, the plumbing, uh, the financial plumbing, to make sure that, uh, that that's kind of held up. Now we're into the second phase, which is really the, the virus data, and um, countries are moving through this at different speeds. Uh, some have, uh, appear to be past it and have reopened. Others are still dealing with it. And I think once we were out of that, then we're into the economic data um, and seeing the, the shock to earnings uh, and see company, how companies have fared, see the, the winners and the losers, the haves and the haves nots. Uh, and then we'll kind of uh, get ourselves through that news. Uh, and then I think we can have a kind of more, more uh, a robust picture of uh, where the economy has, has started to settle down. I think so. those are the kind of three phases yeah. that we think uh, we're kind of moving through. And the, and the virus phase is... You know, for for Europe right now, we're in the we're in the middle of that. Evie, uh, good to speak to you this morning. Um, every day um, we look to the equity market, uh, showing us signals that at least in risk assets, investors seem to be looking through the worst and seeing the recovery on the other side. But if we look at commodities, the gold-oil ratio has been sliding from a record. It's still quite a way above the 30-year average, but it has been coming down. And some people see this as evidence um, that risk appetite is growing among investors. So that's the gold-oil ratio. Are you seeing evidence of that risk? risk appetite and investors looking through the crisis to the other side in other parts of the commodity market? I think clearly you're seeing uh, an appetite for risk uh, return. You've obviously seen massive moves in um, the equity markets last month. It's one of the, you know, the largest up upward moves in equity markets for, for many, many years. Uh, and so obviously that's um, straight after the fall of the previous month. So clearly there's risk being reallocated, and that's been the case now for several weeks. In the commodities markets, you know, they obviously are responding to this as well. If you look at the prices of copper, you know, it's up substantially from its, uh, from its lows, and that's always a good barometer uh, for economic activity. But I think you've also got to take into context, you know, in, when looking at commodity prices, you know, where the, kind of, uh, the landscape is now. You know, if you look at the copper again as an example, you know, we've seen copper producers um, uh, seeing significantly lower operating costs. You've had falls in currencies relative to the dollar. You've had, obviously, a much lower oil price. You know, these are key components of operating costs. So if the marginal cost of production of a commodity has changed um, because of this, um, then you will see a, a reduction in, in terms of people's expectations of where commodities could trade back to. Uh, and I think we're looking at that to see what the, these cost curves are going to look like in the new landscape uh, in terms of some of the inputs that we were used to uh, going into this.